Okay, what I've done next is I went ahead and cleared all the extra chips off of this board. So as you can see, there's no more lumps on it. No more Humpty Doos, except for where my braces are. You can see those. And you can kind of see right here, right here where it's not quite sealed all the way up. But that's okay, I'm not worried about it because what I'm gonna do uh, on the other side um, is I'm gonna go ahead and repair the crack that's on the other side of this board where the actual concrete wood planks are gonna be. So I don't think I wanna chance this right now, um, flipping this over by trying to do this with one hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for a second and flip this over. But you can see the chips stuck really well. This is uh, secured it up real nice. You know, I took it out there and knocked off all those extra chips. And uh, I mean, it's just as stable as can be. You know, I wouldn't put like a ton, I wouldn't sit on it, but it's pretty stable. So uh, see you guys here in a couple seconds. Okay, so I went ahead and flipped everything over. Tabletop's on the other side and you can see Right here, we still somewhat have a crack. It's not completely flush like it needs to be right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in all the way across, and we're gonna level this up with some material. I'll show you what that material is. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using TAB and LRB. The LRB is our um, rubber, liquid rubber base, LRB. And then we have the TAB, which is basically our, our thickening and activating agent for the LRB. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these at a two to one ratio. And then I'm just gonna spread it across here. This is a little bit like, um, you can make it thicker, by adding more TAB, and it's a little bit like uh, Bondo when you're doing uh, repairs on cars, trying to fill in low areas. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up a little bit. Probably should get some gloves on. Okay, got my gloves. Always wanna stir it. Get all the acetylene, uh, whatever it is at the bottom, the materials do separate. You know, this doesn't in the uh, TAB that the LRB does. I am going to go ahead and mix the TAB just a little bit too. Uh, so there's a little bit of water on top of the TAB just because it's been sitting for a while. But the LRB definitely needs to be stirred. That's mixed up pretty good. You go ahead and mix this one up. Uh, this is a little bit different. The TAB is, uh, it's got uh, some thickness to it, but if you add water, it, uh, it'll thin it out. If you want it a little bit thicker, then you just use it as is. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I want it somewhat thick like this. But this is not pearl white. This is actually kind of an aqua color. You guys can see that or not and it's almost like a runny gel i don't really need too much because i'm just going to spread it across here about two inches across this crack right here i'm just going to eyeball the two to one You guys can see that. 
You know, it's a little bit lighter in color, but still has a, a bluish green, more pearl tint to it now. Almost like a baby blue, I guess. Once I get it the way I want it, what I'm going to do is just kind of thinning this down because I don't want this real thick on here. But I want to make sure, you know, I want to make sure that it's covered too. Let me take off a little extra here. And a little extra here. Okay. Go ahead and push that down. Spreading out pretty nice. This is the material that we use to put in our concrete cracks, <coughs> whenever we're using Permaflex, or whenever we have fairly large cracks where there's some movement along, we'll use this and those cracks once we get them cleaned out, okay? Because we want to, we want to be able to have strength in those cracks so that they stay nice and tight and welded together on both sides with this material. Now being that we're not using permaflex over the top of this, this is going to be the concrete overlay with the wood planks. What I'm going to have to do now, once I get this smoothed out the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, sand in this. That way we have a little bit of texture to it. So when we put our decorative concrete overlay, our wood planks, um, we have something for this to grab. Because it, it doesn't bond to just this. It'll bond much better if we use a little bit of sand. It will bond to this, but it won't bond the way it really needs to. It won't be, it won't be as strong as what I'm saying. That's really good enough. Because my sand's gonna go on here and it's gonna kind of raise it up a little bit anyways. See, I mix way too much. You really don't need that much. All right, I have my sand. Get that sand on there real good. Always want to make sure I get plenty of uh, sand on it though. So we'll soak in a little bit. The bottom layer. So I've got a pretty good mound of sand going on there, so we should be good. So I'm just going to basically let that sit right now, let that set up. <clears throat> um, that should set in about probably warm as it is probably a couple hours should be ready to go um, most likely i won't do a uh, concrete um 
concrete coat on it tonight. I've got to do, the next step would be once I clear that off and get rid of that sand, is to do two uh, base coats of concrete, which they're going to be pretty dark because that's going to be my grout. So they'll be uh, a real dark charcoal. But there'll be two coats of dark charcoal going on next. So this mix is uh, a water-based mix. I'm not going to use very much water. I'm not going to use very much, much mix. I'm just going to do the one coat right now. The water I put in here is, I don't know, probably, um, I'm just guessing, maybe 16 ounces. It's very little. Using very little out of that bag. I kind of know what I need for the small coat that I have. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black in that container because I want this to be pretty dark. But being that we are doing two coats, I probably will keep this one a little bit on the lighter side and my second coat will be the darker one. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting some color. So we don't really want them to be the same shade because if they are the same shade, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what you got covered. So. The first coat we always put down a little bit lighter, uh, maybe half the lightness, and the second coat is going to be pretty dark. I'm not going to measure this. Normally I measure it if I've got a full five gallons. You know, and I'm doing multiple buckets to. Uh, a lot more than a small tabletop, so. so again, the second coat is going to be darker than this one. And I've probably got this one a little bit darker than I wanted to, but still, it's not bad. I think you guys can see that or not. Now normally, um, I would go ahead and spray the surface with a little bit of water, and uh, I may go ahead and do that. It's, it's just so hot out here uh, that you almost need a little bit of water just to put down on the surface so that your concrete moves around a lot better for you. Um, without the water, it tends to uh, ball up pretty quick and start drying out on you. So I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of water on this one and, uh, and then put the coat on. I'll move it around with a trowel, and then I'll use a squeegee. Okay, and just like that, with the help of video magic, I'm back. But it was probably only half a second or a millisecond for you guys. So I went ahead and got my, uh, not squeegee, it's a magic trowel. That's what we say in the industry. Right here, already had my trowel. Concrete's already been mixed up. Normally I would use a smaller container to do like a small hand uh, pump up sprayer for this because it's just a small table, but it's already got some solution in so we're going to use this guy. What I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, put another little spin on the concrete. Add a little bit of water, kind of thicken up some stuff in bog. I do want to show you this real quick. Okay, so this is the fiber tape. <clears throat> what I'm going to do with this tape, um, this is what I'm going to use to tape out the pattern, the wood concrete pattern, but right now this is a three quarter inch fiber tape. And what I'm going to use this one for is, I'm going to put it on the inside of this rim right here, where our umbrella goes. I want to put that there and basically create a wall. And you, you actually, uh, since it has fibers in it, you have to cut it with a razor. So I'm going to cut a small piece here. What I think I'm going to need. Hopefully that's about right. It's just going 
going to dam that concrete up so it just can't flow over into that hole, obviously. That's the only reason we need it right now. The tape's a little bit big, a little bit too long, but I can make it work. So I forgot to say, I've already taken, obviously, the sand off of here and sanded that down. So it's, uh, it's not completely flush, but it's pretty close. So that repair is good, it's nice and solid. And then I went ahead and went around the outside perimeter here. Uh, just, just to kind of fine tune it, smooth it out. See this board's hot. It's been sitting out here in the sun, so it's really uh, evaporating and some of it's soaking into the board most likely too. Make it look pretty or it's a little smoother take out some of the roughness I just hit it with some water and imagine trial I'm not worried about the edges here I can clean those up at any time just going over some spots that are a little thin Morning, everyone. My wife is here today to uh, oversee and observe to make sure that I'm doing it right. Yes. Okay, the angle's correct. It's not lining up on this corner exactly. But I might go ahead and shift it. Make sure that I got the angle correct, that's all I'm really looking for. And again, you have to have the razor to cut this fiber tape, you can't just break it off. Alright, so now that I got my first line here, and cut that out and I'm going to take my three-quarter I'm going to make myself a little tape wall just like we did yesterday a couple of things I don't need anymore right now these, these two here I'm going to put these away So when you're laying your tape, you just put one side down, just like you saw me off, do on this last piece. Pull it out nice and tight, and then you just drop it straight down, kind of hovering over the top of the tape, and you just drop it straight down onto your, your mark. 
you always want to stay on one side of your uh, of your mark, which normally is going to be if you're if you're taping this way or whatever way you're taping, you want to stay on you want to stay on the outside of that line. So I'm going to pull this real tight. As long as that's pulled tight, it's going to be straight because you're dropping it from line to line. It's a lot harder to do when you're talking about you know a large area because you're pulling a pretty big line. That's why it's always good to have two people on the floor. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this at the very end. I'm going to do this one at six inches, but I'm going to I'm moving the measuring stick to where my mark is the closest to the edge as it can be. Because if it's like you know back here, then you still have the angle issue to deal with from this point back here from this edge. If it's ten inches from the edge still have to figure out well is it going to be you know where it needs to be at the right angle at the actual edge of the table or the edge of that plank so I always try to make my mark towards the end and again because we're taping this way we're staying on this side of the line. If I put the tape on that side of the line, it's gonna be it's not gonna be six inches. I could put a tape right here and then finish it out probably with a four. I was thinking about putting the eight over there. Maybe I'll do a four and then do an eight. So we'll just flip flop those two. And then we'll do an eight over here to start with. The thing is with doing the four and the six, you're gonna have more grout lines running through your table. So although it is a small area, um, you know, we don't we don't wanna do huge planks, but at the same time we don't wanna bunch of lines going through this either so plus I can do whatever what I want to do because my supervisor is not here you're not gonna have much of a uh, much of a line here on the very end so it doesn't really matter what it is, it's just gonna be a small line, but we will see an eight inch plank right here. But it barely fits on here, which is fine because I'm gonna drop one over there too. pattern you got basically a four inch eight inch four inch six four eight four six four whatever that is we'll say four okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and make my short lines because I'm gonna have uh, have this look like planks where they connect from one plank to the other. Even though it is a table, we still need to make lines going back the other way. This is all gonna be random, no specific length. Just kind of uh, spread them out somewhat evenly so that we have, you know, you know some 
plank where they one meets up with the other one. And it actually looks like wood planks. Okay, now we have some more planks. Let's take a look. So the coat that's going on top of this is actually going to be a white texture coat. And to prevent any type of bleeding underneath the tape with that white coat and getting on our dark grout, what I'll do is when I mix up that white, I'll take and brush all these lines so that we have about two inches of concrete over these lines on all of them. And that will basically uh, seal up that tape. And then once that's dry, I'll come back with our texture coat and we shouldn't have any problem with any bleed under. You want to make sure your, your grout lines are nice and clean. And that's the best way that I've found to make sure that those grout lines stay clean. Okay, so I've got everything set up. I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up the concrete now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some colorant in the, in the mix now. When I do the uh, lines. And it's gonna be a, a dark gray, somewhat like the grout, maybe not quite as dark as the grout. And I'll go over all these lines with that color. And that's gonna lock up all the lines and seal them off because the texture coat is gonna be kind of a eggshell. So it'll be a little bit of a whitish beige color. Um, and I don't want that to bleed up underneath the tape. If this bleeds up underneath the tape, which it shouldn't because I'm going to be brushing it on, but if it does, it'll be pretty close to the same color as the grout, so it won't make any difference. bunch of concrete boogers and stuff like that I can go ahead and smooth that out once I have my lines down but the main thing is is that this is sealed up so that white doesn't penetrate and bleed up underneath that tape so this is our tack coat So 
I'm basically just going to let this dry up. Um, once it's dried up, I'll go ahead and start mixing up the, the white mix. Well, our beige eggshell mix. And that'll be our um, basically our undertone that we're looking to get uh, from our brown stains that we're going to use. I'm going to use some brown, some beige, uh, and some blacks. So um, we're going to try to mix this up and still want to see some of our undertones of our beige because um, we want that to kind of shine through in spots so the whole thing's not brown and black even though we are going to be using a beige stain as well. Um, you know, I definitely want to see some of that beige come through, that, that base beige. So that'll be the next step. I'll come back, I get all that cleaned up, all those boogers off of there, and get that mixed up and we'll put that texture on. Okay, I'm just rub bricking this down just to get off any uh, concrete boogers or burrs, uh, any high spots, I'm just taking that stuff off of there. Don't even really have to put any pressure on this thing, just let it do its thing, just let the, the tool pressure of it just do the, do the work. Okay, that's it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just dust it off. So now we're ready to go ahead and mix up some concrete. And again, we're going to do a uh, like eggshell color. Okay, we are going to use a little bit more water, a little bit more concrete on this one because the material is going to be a lot thicker to create our texture. So. Um, because here's why uh, that will uh, thicken up here if I give it about 10 or 15 minutes to sit there and then I'll go ahead and put another spin on it but it'll thicken up on its own so not in any big hurry um, I really don't want the Sun to be hitting this table when I'm putting it down but it's still a little ways away so I can give this about 10 or 15 minutes not a big deal I'm gonna go get a bite uh, not a bite deep but something to drink be right back Okay, it's mixed up and ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting it on, and let's see, with this, that's all I'm going to put it on with, and I'm going to pour it out, and then uh, basically the only thing I do is I pull my trowel with the grain of the plank, or with the uh, direction of the plank. Like that. Straight back. What that's going to do is it's going to create a suction up underneath that trowel and it's going to give us our wood texture. And, you know, we want this to go on thick. We'll make sure we got our joint lines covered up because there is a little bit of buildup of concrete since we covered them. If I didn't have that tack coat on there and I'm raking that concrete across that line, it's gonna go right up underneath that line, right up underneath that tape. Get 
getting a little dry on me, I'll just grab some more. Come over here where it's, there's a little bit more concrete and it's a little wetter. I'll grab it and I'll put, I'll put it right over here wherever I need it. this trial touches that concrete you can feel the suction and it just drags it along and it just creates that nice nice wood texture because you're, you're dragging you're dragging that concrete along well oh, I gotta piss the clock Yeah, you just want to stick around and drive the shit out of me. Drive me crazy, you should just keep them high. Just going through and making sure my edges are covered up and I don't have an excessive amount of concrete on the edge. Okay. There's the texture. Pretty simple. <clears throat> you just put it out there and drag your trowel. Those edges, of course, I'll clean those up. So it looks a little sloppy on the edges, but I can assure you they'll clean up fine. Okay, so once this sets, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and pull that tape and you'll see that dark gray grout line and then uh, the next step after that is just basically clean it up and get it ready to uh, drill some nail holes in it get that all cleaned up and then uh, after that we start the staining Again, it's just kind of a soft white, a little bit of an eggshell. That's the base we're looking for. Looks like I'm seeing a lot of nice texture from this angle. very textured now some of that I will knock down I'll rub brick some of that and what that's going to do it's going to somewhat flatten it out so it's not so we don't have so many high ridges but a couple of things will happen not only will it knock it down and make it um, a little less texture but it's also going to it's also going to enable me to when I put the stain on 
those open pores from where the uh, rub brick knocked off the high points of this concrete you know the high part of the texture um, it's going to leave the pores of the concrete in those areas open and what that means is the stain will penetrate those areas a lot more and sit there and those areas will actually become darker spots so those high areas that get rubbed off will be a little bit darker than everything else so that way it really just uh, creates more of a 3d effect gives you a lot more realism so it does look more authentic and you know all these little things help it actually make make it look like concrete wood or regular wood I should say I think I can do this with one hand well you can see the texture Let's see, maybe over here, there we go, a little better lighting. Now I did put in two knot holes. I made my knot holes right here off camera. Yep, there it is there. And then I drug, I just took a brush and I swirled it around and then I drug it out. Over here. This one you can barely see, but it looks like it's right here. And then I drug that out a little bit. That'll show up a lot more whenever I go to stain this, but let's go ahead and pull this tape.
already this morning is I went ahead and sealed this bottom that we did uh, the first day. We did the board, started the board before we threw the uh, vinyl chips on. That's all locked in. Did our repair. All that stuff is done below. Waterproof, sealed up and ready to go. So today we're going to start the uh, sanding process on this tabletop. What I've got here is a bark brown stain. A lighter version of the bark brown stain. Then I've got graphite metallic suspended in resin, which is like a white milky resin where I put my metallic powders into. And this one is the graphite, which is going to be like a dark charcoal black. This one here is a combination of three. Same thing, it has the resin. And uh, but it has it has the metallic powder in it, but it has three colors. It has the graphite, which it has a pinch of the graphite. I didn't put a whole lot, and then it's half coffee and half um, deep mocha. So you know it's a nice brown. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the lighter color stain, the bark brown. Let me get a stir stick. Alright, so I'm going to start with this lighter brown, bark brown, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm just going to kind of do areas here and there on the board. I'm not going to like stain the entire board, and I'm going to put this on with a brush. So I'll just kind of put it in spots where I want it, and then I'll come back in and uh, use the darker bark brown. But kind of while I'm putting it down with the brush, if I feel like it's too much or too dark, I'll take a rag. No, I need to find my rag, and then I'll take in, uh, absorb some of the uh, stain up with the rag. So I'll kind of rub it in, pull some off. Um, so that'll help blend everything really nice when it comes time to blend everything. But I will be using the rag during the steaming process if I feel like I have to for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. <laughs> So what I'm doing right now after I put this lighter brown on here, it's uh, it's gone all the way to the bottom for the most part, the bottom part of the board, um, which is what I want because I want that to penetrate into the concrete. What I'm going to do now is just lightly brush over the top of it so it hits the high spots. <laughs> Try not to do too much of it because I still have, you know, three other colors. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick a little bit of stain on it. I don't want to do too much because again I have other colors that I'm going to do. But this is just going to add to the uh, the overall look of it. Makes it look kind of like uh, little wormholes in the wood. Okay. You just take a little bit and flick it. Okay, so I'm going to take our next color. Some of these boards I may make a little bit darker than others um, because I don't want everything really to look the same on each board as far as like you know lightness and darkness I want 
some boards to have the lightness and darkness in them, but they might be more of a solid board or more of a darker color than some of the other ones. So that way we have variations, not only inside of each board, but uh, there's, they're separated with their own. That board's a little bit lighter, same, same color tones, same colors. It's just a little bit lighter. And this one here, same colors, just a little bit darker. So we have some good variation between each board, each plank. All right, now I'm gonna do the metallics. And I'll probably save the, uh, the black or graphite metallic for last. Um, unless I feel like I've gotten some of the areas a little bit too dark, then I may go ahead and mix up a little bit of uh, pearl metallics. I'm sorry, not the pearl, but uh, just the white colorant with our resin and uh, then go back over it and add some a little bit of white washing here and there just on the top end uh, because you, I mean you're really not going to see that much if it soaks in to the whole board but you'll see it on the top end you know and the reason being is because your base is a lighter color So on this one, uh, now that I've got my browns on, I'm going to go ahead and do my graphite. And then uh, we'll see what it looks like after that. And if we need to go ahead and add some of the uh, white, we'll go ahead and do that. But once it's done, uh, the next step after that is to put our uh, nail holes in each plank. And I'll go ahead and drill those in. And then we'll put some black ink inside of those so it looks like a nail head. Kind of scratching that in real lightly, obviously with the stir stick. I want to darken it up a little bit so it actually looks like a knot hole. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flick a little bit of this um, black on this graphite. So we want this to look like uh, you know some wormholes. We'll have some dark spots on it. I already put some of the brown on there, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of black. You won't see these too much, they'll be pretty subtle. going to go through and create some, uh, uh, I guess like veins, it looks like it's uh, sunk in and got some craters, so it's kind of a shadowing technique. What I'm trying to do here is just add a little bit of color to the top, instead of doing it with the brush I'm just using the stick kind of burnishing that in a little bit. Now I'm just going to mix up some black dye and a little paintbrush and just dab those in there. A little bit tedious on a bigger job, but I'm just going to put a little drop. Alright guys, so that's it for now. Um, we will come back here in a little while and seal this thing down. Alright, so we're in the final stage here. I'm going to seal this thing down. This is an acrylic sealer, and I'm going to put two coats on here. First coat should soak in, 
second coat's going to give us more of a shine. It doesn't take too long to dry, really, with this heat the way it is. Now the colors are going to pop. So I'm going different directions here. I went with the planks, and now I'm going to cross hatch and go the other direction. There's a lot of texture. It's pretty heavily textured. But then you also have your grout lines. So you want to make sure that you uh, go one way, go the other way, go the opposite way again if you have to. Normally that takes care of it going two different ways. Go one way and then cross hatch. But you know, this isn't a very big tabletop, so it's not going to take long to seal, it's not going to take long to dry. Okay, let's dry it up so I'm going to leave it alone. <clears throat> okay guys, um, this thing's done. Alright, let's see what it looks like from a different angle. Show you guys all around the table here. So from this angle, to me, what I'm seeing is it looks a little bit darker. But when you come around and you capture this from a different angle, you see a little less color, a little more darkness. From that angle, now we keep coming around. Now from this angle, it looks lighter. So a lot of that's the angle that you're looking at it. A lot of it's the light coming into the camera as well. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. There's the knot hole that I did. Lines are nice and clean. Some areas a little more jagged than others. A 
overall, it's a nice tabletop. Sun's kind of messing with it. Shadows over here a little bit on this end. But I can assure you, all of it looks more like what you're seeing right here. I had another knot hole that I made right over here. That was the one that kind of got, got caught between the uh, grout line. You can see it right here. All right, guys, that's really it. Um, not really much to show. You guys have seen it all from start to finish. See you on the next project.